Hi guys. Hello. I'm Amanda. I'm Jordan. Huxtable and Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are married, but we have different last names. Um, thanks for watching our little video here. Uh, we're going to chat with you about what we've been up to and how we got involved in performing and with Barnstormers. So we both started performing when we were pretty young. Right? Yeah, my best performance as a child was playing uh, one of two crabs singing Kiss the Girl with one of my other friends, I was probably seven years old, who was in a rowboat on the stage. And me and my best friend at the time performed in two crab suits made out of felt that my mom sewed together. Wow. Uh, that really, really had me I've seen pictures. It's really quite something. My mom also did all my makeup, so he picture heavy blush, uh, full face of foundation. Um, I also grew up performing as well in Canada, um, and I don't even remember how young I was when I first started, but I always knew that's what I wanted to do. Right out of the womb. Right she out of the womb. Performing. I was sure I was screaming, um, and I did some musicals oh. as a kid, some theater plays and went on and I did Canadian Idol when I was in Canada. Fancy. Um, and my first big role at a professional theater was Maria in The Sound of Music. Um, and then I went on to study musical theater in the United States and eventually moved to New York. Which is where we met doing a children's theater show, Theater Works USA for those in the know. Um, called Vanicula, which was based on this like 1980s children's uh, books about a vampire rabbit. But the adaptation was written by Charles Bush, who is a famous uh, drag queen mm -hmm. and writes drag shows in New York. So it was a children's musical theater show written, written by, by a drag, drag queen. queen, where we played <laughs> husband and wife in the show, not knowing that how many One years day, later, we would two, be real four years and later, <laughs> we would get married. So yeah, we met doing that kids theater tour, and we've both been in New York for. 10 years for me. 12 and, years. Yeah, and um, spent lots of time doing shows in New York, off Broadway, lots of concerts, national tours, uh, regional theater all over the, the country as well as in Canada. Um, yeah, that's that's what we've been up to as well as the Barnstormers. <laughs> so how'd you get involved? Um, I started us off with our love affair with the Barnstormers maybe nine years ago now. I don't even know. It might be longer than that. 10 years ago? Maybe, maybe. 10 years ago. Um, my first show out there was Big River and the same summer I did The Foreigner. Both really amazing memories that I will always treasure. I just absolutely fell in love with Barnstormers and the community. You played Mary Jane? Mary Jane in Big River um, and Catherine in The Foreigner and it was an amazing summer. I will never forget my first summer there. We were not together at that time. So that is maybe the one year that I didn't Come see you. See my shows. Yeah, yeah, but the next year we had begun dating and you were in, was it 10 Nights in a Bar Room? 10 Nights in a Bar Room. Yes. yes. If you haven't seen it, you really missed out. Um, what else? That summer. Then I think I did The Mystery of Edwin Drood, um, where I played Drood maybe the next summer. Um, and with George Moon over, Peel and, yeah, yeah, and Buddy. Moon over Buffalo. Um, what gosh, are the other Amanda Huxley I don't hits? even know, you guys. There have been, there've been quite there've a been number so many. of really fun jobs. Relatively speaking, a lot of farce stuff. Me and Buddy Hart often played opposite each other, which was really fun. So I was lucky enough to get to just come up and witness uh barnstormers and tamworth in general uh from like an actor who was like dreaming of working at the barnstormers one day and then your first show there uh was spam a lot uh which we did together yes which was a blast um and then also that summer did i do another show no it was just it was just i think it was just spam lot that summer I played Sir Robin, uh, the unfortunate knight who gets so scared that he spoils his drawers. Pretty funny. I'm sure you guys remember that show. That was a blast. Fingers crossed you remember that moment. Um, and then the next year? Uh, the next year was Damn Yankees and Laughter on the 23rd right, Floor. Right, Correct? Yeah. 
or no producers. Oh wait, the producers maybe was the year after. Was the Doesn't year before. Doesn't matter what year it was. Now you know my entire yeah. Barnstormers history. Um, so those were all really fun and I got to come out and watch Jordan in some of those shows, which was really neat to be in the audience for and kind of share the Barnstormers community with my husband now too and all of you. So that's how we met. That's how we got involved with Barnstormers. What's your favorite slash like most uh, like crazy Barnstormers experience? Oh gosh, there are so many. On stage and off stage. I think on stage was pretty funny. I believe it was Moon Over Buffalo. No, it was, I think it was Moon Over Buffalo um, where we hadn't had a chance to rehearse fully with the set. Like something had gone wrong before opening and we hadn't like tested the doors. <laughs> and Moon Over Buffalo is... <sighs> a farce with a lot of opening and closing of doors and quick pace and we were getting stuck <laughs> on stage because I think I might have been turning the door wrong like it might have been my fault I was turning it the wrong way or I was pushing or pulling and I was pushing when I should have been pulling and somebody one of us at some point pulled the door or pushed the door the wrong way and then it wouldn't open for the rest of the show and so we were all getting very creative of trying to figure out how to open it and get around get off stage yeah. and on stage it was pretty hilarious i'm pretty sure they're going through the kitchen right now yes but... i know it sounds weird that that's one of my favorite moments but i think it was funny the audience was all dying with us and we were all you know <laughs> collaborating together to figure out in the moment how to get through it and I it think just added an extra layer of hilarious. One of my favorite things about the Barnstormers is that whole like conspira conspiratorial air with the audience because they know that the shows get put up lickety split. Yeah. And so, for instance, when I was in the producers, there's this moment where I'm going like crossing downstage as Carmen Gia and yelling at Roger or something. And I sit down on this chair and... <laughs> Of course, all the props that they use are like these beautiful, like antique props. And so I sit down on the chair and just hear this big crack and just screamed out loud. And the audience died. And I was like so horrified because I'd fully broken the arm of the chair, but just kept on going because, of course, the show must go on. Yeah. So. Moments like that were always have always been so so fun. I don't say past tense. I'm I'm saying present. Well, continue to be. Yeah, you know it's been tough not doing what we love, being on the stage, not being with our community, all of you that we love to entertain and yeah. adventure with, and that's something a big part of our lives has been missing this past year. Um, but so much of being a performer is having that kind of electric back and forth between the audience and the performers yeah. and at barnstormers especially that uh dynamic is very alive yeah so so that's something i think we're both craving and missing a lot these days but we actually ended up we were in new york city for most of the pandemic and well not most of the pandemic but at the height of new york's pandemic explosion um, and we ended up leaving at the end of the summer and going to stay with Jordan's family in Idaho, which was an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were very grateful that they were able to take us in because we were losing our minds a little bit in New York. Um, you know, just being shut inside all day and looking out at a brick wall. But, and so then after staying at our, at my family's house for a couple months, we had the opportunity to come up to Canada, return to Amanda's homeland and stay in an aunt's apartment while they were away. And that then turned into our decision to, uh, spend some time during the pandemic up here. I actually ended up getting a job offer for a new animated children's series. So <laughs> it's always children's series. Always children's theaters. So I'm um, playing this little wild monster on a new show called My Singing Monsters. Um, and we're doing it in motion capture outfits. I've never done motion capture before. They basically put her in a spandex suit with sensors on her. And then she becomes this like... Uh, monster, this pink little, little animated monster. cartoon. So I actually move, I animate it with my body. So when I'm moving, it actually moves 
the character's hands, and then I also voice it at the same time. And it's all live. So it's it's similar to theater in some ways. It's the most theatrical thing I've done in the last year, um, where we actually are streaming it live every Friday night. Um, you can find it on YouTube if you search for <laughs> My Singing Monsters. Um, it's just on their YouTube channel, and it airs Friday nights at 7.30 uh, Eastern. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we actually go in on Friday nights and we rehearse all day for the next episode. Um, and then the episode actually records live and goes streams on YouTube. Um, and we have audience interaction, people can write in. It's actually very much in the spirit of the Barnstormers. It is a little bit. It's it. kind of like fly by the seat of your pants, make it work. <sighs> Um, and audience the audience interaction. is really involved. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's, you know, it's for children and it's based on a video game that was very popular. So it's a very specific audience that will enjoy it. But it's been a lot of fun and I've been learning a lot. And that brought us here to Vancouver, which has been absolutely beautiful up here. Um, and I signed with a new agency up here who also wants to sign Jordan as soon as he gets yes. his uh, paperwork in order to be legal to work in Canada. And today I actually just did my first voiceover job for a commercial for the company Thinkific, if you've ever heard of them. So things have been really busy. And then tell them the other big news. Uh, what's the other Where big news? Oh currently. yeah, we're coming at you from our new apartment. We have been essentially homeless for the last year, traveling from friend's house to friend's house, to family to family. And uh, we decided while the paperwork is getting uh, sorted out to stay here for the next year. So we signed a lease. It has a beautiful view of the English Bay, which is the body of water that surrounds uh, the island, the like peninsula yeah, of right, Vancouver. Yeah. I'm still learning. Um, and we're gonna make a go of it here. Yeah. We're so excited and so eager for the return of theater um, because there's a little theater happening in downtown Vancouver and fingers crossed, we're able to come back and do some theater in the States yeah. as things What's open up. What's great is, you know, we still have roots in New York. We still have all of our belongings in the storage yeah. unit in New York. So we'll be getting back there soon in the next few months. All of our friends and, and our life is still in New York. So we'll be going back and forth and kind of flexible, hoping to still be able to do some theater this summer if things are happening and, and be a little bit of gypsies, go wherever we need to go to be able to do what we love. Um, and we'll just see, I guess, how everything shakes out and how performing changes over the next couple of years now that we have when everything happened we essentially uprooted our whole lives in order to follow wherever the work is exactly so, so we're kind of morphing you know we really had been theater actors always and now we're moving into some film and tv and the voiceover and the motion capture and um live streaming and i, I think it's been interesting to see how things have been able to get created online in a digital way that hasn't happened in the past. So, you know, Zoom performances, and we've been part of some Zoom performances and readings and concerts and things like that. Jordan's doing a recording of a whole cast album, actually, from our closet. <laughs> Coming at you month. live from right over here. Um, <sighs> So I think everyone in the artistic community, you know, we're all resilient. Everybody finds a way to make art and come together and find community. Keeping it alive for yeah. sure. So when things do open back up, we'll experience an artistic renaissance. I really think we will. I think, I think so too. As soon as we're able to be in person together and create together, everyone's juices are going to be so ready to flow <laughs> and so ready to collaborate and bounce off of each other. Um, so I think it's going to be a really exciting time when we're all finally able to be back in the space. It'll just be a different kind of space, obviously. You know, theater people, we are very touchy-feely. We're <laughs> very loud, always in each other's faces. So that'll be something that we'll adjust and get used to again. And But we have the experience and the knowledge of having worked at the Barnstormers, which is naturally such an adaptive place exactly. that we will be able to 
make the transition. You know, I found that working on both of these shows out oh. here that the what I learned at Barnstormers was so helpful in being able to just jump in and do what you need to do and not think about it too much, not stress yourself out and trust that the people around you have your back and that it'll, it's going to happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's a great metaphor for the times that we're in too. Definitely. So we miss you all and we hope that we will all be together again soon. We will see each other very soon. We will. And we're thinking of you all and missing beautiful Tamworth. It's always in our hearts. It always is. And one day we'll be back in the lake swimming and looking at those mountains. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you at Chikorua. That's right. Stay well and be safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>